Hello, viewers and friends. Once again, you are welcome to this corner. And I want to say that God has been faithful to us. Amen. So, <clears throat> I am continuing with this series on blood guiltiness. Last time I was talking about sexual dealings with bloodly related failures. So today I want us to look at a case study, a biblical case study of somebody who had such vile affection to a relative. So I'll be reading from 2 Samuel chapter 13, from verse 1. The Bible says, and it came to pass after this that Absalom, the son of David, had a fair sister whose name was Tamar, and Amnon, the son of David, loved her. Can you imagine? So, Tamar, Amnon, were stepbrothers, the same father, different mothers. So, Tamar was Absalom's sister. Everybody talked about how bad, how terrible Absalom was. But nobody found out how the problem started. The problem originated from this issue of going to defile this young girl. So Amnon was so vexed, that is so, not vexed, but possessed. That is what it is. Another word of saying was so obsessed that he felt sick for his sister Tamar. For she was a virgin, and Amnon thought he it hard for him to do anything to her. She was a virgin. So it's not that somebody, it's somebody that they had married, and you know, so he can easily rape her. No, but this one, it was very difficult how to be able to even get contact with her because of restrictions on the part of David. David actually brought his children under control, and uh, though they were princes and princesses. They were not that promiscuous and they were not permitted, especially the women, were not permitted to mix anyhow. To even go out of the house was not easy. So that posed a problem to Amnon, who kept citing the sister but cannot actually have close link uh, with her. So in verse 3, but Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab. Actually, Jonadab was the, uh, the cousin, first cousin, the son of Shimei, David's brother. Can you imagine? When people want to do this act, the, the connection is, <laughs> is just like that because he's the devil that wants to ruin the home. So, but Amnon had a friend whose name was Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother. And Jonadab was a very subtle man, like the serpent. And he said unto him, that is very crafty. And he said unto him, why art thou, being the king's son, lean from day to day? Can you see how obsessed Amnon was? It affected his health. That kind of passion, affection, was highly demonic. So he started tormenting his health. He says, will thou not tell me? And Amnon said unto him, I love Tama, my brother Absalom's sister. And Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed. They are always having people who can advise, advise us. Mm, he said, friend, we are just trying to help the friend. But you don't think of the problem it will generate tomorrow. So Jonadab said unto him, Lay thee down on thy bed and make thyself sick. Of course he was already sick. And when thy father come to see thee, because the father will hear that you are sick, and David will go and see his son that is sick. I said David had a family of, he could control, though he married different wives, but all the children were under subjection. So lay thee down on thy bed, and make thyself sick. And when thy father come to see thee, say unto him, I pray thee, let my sister Tamar come, and give me meat, and dress the meat in my sight, that I may see it and eat it at her hand. So Amnon lay down, 
and made himself sick. And when the king was come to see him, I'm not said unto the king, I pray thee, let them and my sister come and make me a couple of cakes in my side that I may eat at her hand. Then David sent home to Tama, saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him in. Now let me say something here. Today's girls are out of control. What's a child? You know, feels she is grown up enough. She does not want the parents to know where she's going to. She does not want the parents to control her movement. She does. Now we are talking about Bible standard Christian living. If at this time a busy king, a warring king, a king with so many enemies around him, but he had family discipline. So it has to come by his mouth for Tamar to be released to go and attend to Amnon. Which nobody will say anything wrong. Nobody will see any danger. In that kind of a thing. So David sent him to Tamar saying, Go now to thy brother Amnon's house and dress him meat. So Tamar went to her brother Amnon's house and he was laid down and she took flour and kneaded it and made cakes in his sight and did bake the cakes. And she took a pan, poured them out before him but he refused to eat. He has finished baking the cake. He has put it now to serve him. He refused. And Amnon said, have out all men from me. So all his bodyguards said they should all go out. And they went out. And they went out every man from him. And Amnon said unto Tamar, bring the meat into the chamber, into my bedroom, that I may eat of thine hand. And Tamar, not knowing the setup, took the cakes, which he had made, and brought them into the bedroom to Amnon, that is chamber, his bedroom, to Amnon, her brother. And when she had brought them unto him to eat, he took hold of her, instead of taking hold of the plate, and said unto her, Come, lie with me, my sister. So it's not that he didn't know that he's a sister. And she answered him and said, No, my brother, do not force me. For no such thing ought to be done in Israel, in any house of God, in any community of God, in any church of God. Do not doubt this fully. Because as I'm teaching this lesson, so many pastors are going to be angry. Why are they angry? Because what is staring before them is the, this attitude. They are doing it to church members. To do it to a church member is an abomination. No, my pastor, such a thing ought not to be done in the church in the house of God, in the community of believers. Are you a pastor? People say you are sleeping with girls in the church. And the girl says you are sleeping with them. How horrible. Was that part of the calling? No, I'm just asking. Did God anoint your private part to come and create conflict in people's lives? Who do you think you are? Supposing you were not a man of God, you were walking some other place, will you take advantage? Will you even see those women to take advantage of them, even people's wives? What a disgrace. Who tells you that you are a man of God? You are a man of Leviathan. You are not a man of God. Because if you are a man of God, you forget small shame for your face. How will you stand and face this congregation? So this girl said, no. It's not good. He said, and I, okay, look at, well, whither shall I cause my shame to go? And as for thee, thou shalt be as one of the fools in Israel. That is what everyone that rapes a girl, that, you know, breaks the virginity of a small child that is about to grow. Or that is, you are a fool in your own community. Now, therefore, I pray thee, speak unto the king. If you are looking for sex, speak unto the king. For he will not withhold me from thee. Then have me as a wife. But if you will be ashamed to have me as a wife, then be much more ashamed to rape me. That is what this little girl was telling the buffoon that could not reason. So in verse 14, how be it? He will not hearken unto her, her voice. Because it's something that he had nurtured, he had nursed, you know, over how many months. 
But being stronger than she forced her. You know what I tell girls? A man wants to force you, keep quiet. Let him just remove that in thing, then drag it. Dra that is your strength. Drag it with all, let him drag it until he collapses to the floor. Then you get up and, and run away. Just allow him. Let him bring him, bring him low. You know? But being stronger than she forced her and lay with her. He lay with her. He had it. What is what he wanted? Now immediately he laid with her. Let's see. Then Hamnon hated her exceedingly. That is, how many minutes between the time you loved, you loved her, and now you got what you wanted? Now, just that moment, that moment you had your satisfaction. Then Amnon hated her exceedingly, so that the hatred wherewith he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. Can't you people see that this is demonic? That thing that the devil has sown in your heart, is actually seed of hatred. And you shall love your neighbor as you love yourself. Would you like somebody to do that to your child? Will you? Then if not, will you like your son to sleep with your daughter? Will you? Then if not, don't do it. Don't do it. Then he hated her. With what? Why the hatred? I thought this was what you wanted. So he, he does not even care how the girl feels. So that the hatred with which he hated her was greater than the love wherewith he had loved her. And Amnon said unto her, Arise, be gone. Can you imagine? Some men do that. Try to lure a girl, lure a girl, lure a girl. When the girls are stupid to get into their bed, when they say, get out. Come on, get out. And when, when tomorrow something will happen to you, people would ask, from where, where does it come from? And she said unto him, there is no cause. This evil in sending me away is greater than the other that thou didst unto me. But he will not hearken unto her. Then he called his servant that ministered unto him, the people he had sent out, and said, put now this woman, he now called her, he called her this woman out from me and bolt the door after her. So he now knew that he had a door that had bolts that needed to be bolted. He now called her woman. He now pushed her out. So what is Satan obsessing you with? What is, what is that loss you are losing after somebody that is related to you? After your, neighbor, your neighbor's children? After your neighbor's wife? Don't say it's love. It's not love. What love? What kind of love is that? Somebody is marrying that lady that you want to sleep with. You say love. It's not love. Don't, don't misuse the word love. Love does not hurt. Love is kind. Love is promotional. Love cares. Love secures. So you call that love? I call that wickedness. The Bible calls it wickedness. Let's change this language of the world. It is the world that has changed loss, a wicked thing to love. It is not love. And loss is obsession, is demonic. It comes from the devil, not from God. That's why it corrupts your affection and makes it vile. So you go after what you ought not to go after. So she had a garment of diverse colors upon her because as a virgin, she needed to display her colors. For with such robes were the king's daughters that were virgins apparelled. Then his servant brought her out and bolted the door after her to push her out, locked the door. So Tamar put ashes on her head, rent her garment that was on her, that her virginity has been broken so there is no point to wear this color and deceive people so she put ashes on her head rent a garment of diverse colors that was on her and laid hand on her head and went on the street crying crying and Absalom her brother said unto her had Amnon thy brother been with thee 
But hold down thy peace, my sister. He is thy brother. Regard not this thing. So Tama remained desolate in her brother Absalom's house. Now, let me tell you what that means. She remained depressed. She was depressed. She could not relate with anybody at all, all the rest of her life. Only the elder brother, Absalom, took her in. So he's going to be his burden. He's going to care for her from age, from one, you know, till she's old, till she's dead. Nobody is going to marry her. She has been defiled. But when King David heard of all these things, he was very wroth. He was very angry. He was very angry. Now, that is what happens when the affection takes you out of the usual place. The Bible says to avoid fornication, let every man marry. Now, people have told me, hey, if you sleep with a girl and she's your girlfriend, there is nothing like girlfriend in the Bible. There is nothing like that. You can only sleep with a girl that is your wife. The Bible says if you sleep with the girl and she has menstruated or you sleep with her, then take her in. That's what 1 Corinthians chapter 7 is teaching. Take her in as your wife. So was she only good to be slept with? All these ones that the world says is my girlfriend, is my boyfriend. It's not a biblical language. It's a satanic language that is in the world. And we are in the world. But we are not of the world. So you slept with a girl. You say she's a girlfriend. On what right? On what right? Tell me the right. You have not married her. The parents have not received any honor or glory. The parents have not been, you know, honored within the community. Marriage, the Bible says, is honorable in all and the bed undefiled. And you are already sleeping, 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 sleeping with a girl, committing abortion, 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 abortion every month, every day, every week. And you are saying, is, 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 is by consent? What kind of consent? Whose consent did you create that girl? She, she that is selling her body. You too that is rubbishing your body, which is supposed to have been God's temple. Has God permitted it? The Bible says, for every other sin you sin, you sin out of the body. But this one, you commit the sin against your own soul because it has to do with blood. It's exchange of blood. As far as Amnon was concerned, he had broken the virginity of a girl that had a future. He had taken away her future. He had robbed her of marriage honorably as a princess. It would have been a joy for David to sit with his cabinet and give out his beloved daughter in marriage. But somebody said he was vexed or he was obsessed or he was pussy. And came and immediately to show you that this is highly demonic, immediately he finished defiling the girl. The Bible says he hated her more than he now told her to get out and rise and get out of my house. When the girl said, no, I'm not going for what? Don't even try it because to even do, do this one now, to send me out is worst. Because you slept with me, you have to marry me. He said they should drag her out. Call the servant. Push this woman. I said, call her. Push her out. Bolt the door against her. And that was what they did. That was what they did. Have you ever asked yourself the extent you have gone to break the laws of God? The last lesson I tried to show you that if you do this thing, you are sinning against the land. Now, the land has a duty to vomit you out. The land has a command. God himself has commanded the land to spew you out. Now, as he slept with this girl, you know what he has done? He has rubbed shoulder with God. That's what he has done. In Mark chapter 11 verse 2, the Bible says, And said unto them, Go your way into the village over against you. And as soon as he be entered into it, he shall find a cold tied. 
Every man looking for a wife is looking for a decent girl that is homely, that is kept in the home. We are on, never man sat. We are on, never, no man has ever slept on. That is the girl that will be loose and brought to the husband. That girl you call girlfriend, whose concern? So when the people ask, said the Lord make, has the owner, the owner. Then you sleep with a girl five years, seven years, leave her, sleep with another one, sleep, and like that, like that, you are still a guy, 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 guy. But you can't stay with that woman, and you are not marrying any. You are not marrying any into the house. You need to lose that girl from the parents' control and satisfy the parents and take that girl into your house. That is the way, and that is scriptural. In Luke 19, verse 30, the Bible says, Go ye into the village against you, a confirmation. The word of God has to be confirmed. In the which at your entering you shall find a cold tide. We are on, yet never man sat. To marry is to lose a girl from the control of the parents. That means every parent should control their children. You see all this Western life we are bringing into African culture. It's not good. Before, when I was young, it was rare to have single mothers. Now, do you know that one girl can deliver five children to five different men? Some, he doesn't, she doesn't know all. Some, she doesn't even know where they are. What kind of abomination is this? The earth will spew you out one day. And all these things, you are tampering with God's glory. Because virginity was prophesied by prophet Zechariah about the king about the marriage that will take place and how the king will sit on a virgin ass and triumphantly entered into Jerusalem as a conclusive part of remission of sin, redemption, redemption of mankind. Now, you have no right to have a cult that is a virgin that you had not explained that we came here to lose this cult to become our own. You have not done that to the parents. And you are sleeping with the girl. Tomorrow you beat her, you take her out. Another day you bring another one. Do you think it is gone? It's not gone. The Lord is writing it. Fornication is a sin of blood, crime, criminality. The guilt stays. The guilt stays. Do you know that there are some women, they see you 10 years, 15 years, 20 years after. Some of them, they feel like, you know, some even spit on you when you try to call them. Some abuse you. They ask, what's wrong? I, say, I don't know. I don't know why she's doing like that. You know, there is a reason why she's doing like that. There is a reason. And now, that is human being reacting. What of God? I'm not never cared how the sister Tama will feel. He never cared the future of the sister. Is that love? Perfect love demands that he would have protected the sister from that kind of hurt. In Isaiah 42 verse 8, I was trying to talk about God's glory, which has to shine. He said, I am the Lord. That is my name. And my glory will I not give to another Neither my praise to graven images. Now look at the life of Amnon. What was pushing his occiput? Demon. Then he met his cousin. First cousin. Who was subtle. Subtlety there has, is, the, is the character of Satan. The Bible says in Genesis chapter 3 verse 1. Now the serpent was more subtle than any beast of the field. That was why Satan used him. Then you find out that person, John Adam. Satan again used him. Now, all the problems that will come, he will corner himself out. To. He will not say he was the one mediating. So God says, I will not share my glory with another. Now, when you break virginity in this manner, you are tampering with God's glory and God will pursue you. He will demand it out, out of your hand. You said, I was an unbeliever. 
Yeah, then you should have stayed in the sins of unbelievers. Not this kind of hurt. Not this kind of pain. The king himself felt bad, terribly hot. What is this? So there are always engraven images. There are demonic forces behind this kind of act. And the aim, the aim is to rubbish the fullness and the complete work of God and to destroy homes. So that somebody is going to marry and the home is not going to start to gain the blessings of virginity like the house of Mary had, like every other house in Israel had. So in Isaiah 48, verse 11, for mine own sake, even for mine own sake, that is the Lord saying, will I do it? For how should my name be polluted? And I will not give my glory unto another. So, if you are sleeping with a virgin, you are polluting the name of the Lord. And not only that, you are trying to take God's glory. Something that would have been a joy to the husband there. For the husband to come and say, Oh, thank God, oh, my wife was intact till I married her, even in this, you know, bad, promiscuous, indecent, immoral, and all that. So, but... You know, you robbed God of that and you, you took occasion of that. And after that, some killed the girl. Some, after they raped the girl, even though she's a virgin, they kill her. Because the girl has seen their faces so that they will not be caught. They kill and throw her into the woods. Wow. 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 God will demand that thing, that glory of God you tampered with. He will follow you anywhere you enter. He will follow you. In Isaiah 43, verse 7, even everyone that is called by my name, for I have created him for my glory, I have formed him. Yea, I have made him. So I am the one that make a virgin. So if you go and tamper with that virgin and spoil and rubbish and destroy, understand that you have crossed your limits. You were given bounds. You've gone beyond. And anybody that goes beyond the H, he will be beaten by the serpent. So you will just wait for the serpent bite. I don't think you will like it, but definitely it's coming. You know what Job said? In Job 19 verse 9, he had stripped me of my glory. Have you? Have you? You have taken the crown from my head. The glory of God in the life of the virgin, the crown of joy that was on her head when you rape a girl, that's what you take from her. You leave her stuck naked. Stuck naked, defiled, abused, feeling dirty inside, having unforgiveness inside. That is what you do. And that was what happened in the case of Amnon. And it was not a small thing because Absalom reacted. The reaction of Absalom, even though he told the sister, I spoke as a mature man, he said, don't worry, it's your brother. Don't worry. Don't worry, it's your brother. But what did he do? In our text, Second Samuel chapter 13, from verse 25 to 36, and the king said to Absalom, Nay, my son, let us not all go, lest we be chargeable to you. Okay, let me tell you what happened. Absalom now told the king that he wants to hold a feast, that everybody should come, all the king's sons should come, including Amnon. Amnon should come, including the king. The king said, no, I won't come, let me not come. It's good for the princes to come. Let everybody not come unto thee. So, but he prays and prays. He said, no, 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 how will I do? I, all the princes and princesses, are, let them come. Yeah, it's our party. Okay, king, even if you won't come. So, as he presses the king, the king accepted. So, Absalom is going to hold a feast. He's going to hold a party. Why? The way Amnon also was sick. His own is not sick, it's a celebration. So, let them come. 
and he pressed him. How be it? He would not go, that is, the king would not go, but blessed him. He permitted that the other children should go. Yes, then said Absalom, it not, I pray thee, let my brother Amnon go with us. And the king said unto him, why should he go with thee? Why? But Absalom pressed him that he let Amnon and all the king's sons go with him. Well, the king would not have thought of anything because it's an open party. Now, Absalom had commanded his servants, saying, Mark he now, when Amnon had his merry with wine, and when I say unto you, smite Amnon, then kill him, fear not, have not I commanded you? Be courageous and be valiant. Kill him. Take that courage. And the servant of Absalom did unto Amnon as Absalom had commanded. Then all the king's sons arose, and every man got him up upon his mule and fled. So there was commotion. There was scatter, scatter. They have killed Amnon. Why? Because he raped Tama. He raped Tama. From that time to he himself, he did not have freedom. Now, he had made Absalom to commit serious trespass, serious blood of crime. Now, now, he is a murderer. He is a murderer. So it came to pass, while they were in the way, that tidings came to David, saying, Absalom has slain all the king's sons, and there is not even one of them left. Somebody came with the bad news. Just like I used to hear too many bad news about me, and I would be asking, is it me? Hey, this woman, they said you kill, uh, uh, you, you, you tell children that they are witches, and you kill them. Me? Please mention one. One. And who are these saying this? Atheists came from UK to say it. I thought parents, I thought police should have arrested me if there were such things. But for me to come and say that there is no God, they, they came to ask me to say no. I said no. No angel, no. No this, no Jesus, no, no salvation, no demon. I said, why are you coming to me? What does that? Hey, they will make my name great. I rejected it. So it was when I rejected it that day. That these atheists, I don't even know where they came from. They said they came from UK. Today, so where are they? And they were paying people in Akwaibum. And here I am in Calabar. And they are talking about Akwaibum. And that there is an evil forest, which I don't know where the evil forest was. Before I knew it, I was on CNN. Before I knew it, they were showing video of children I've never seen in my life with my eyes. But I tell you what, it's okay. That is it. But the truth is always there because I have a crowd of witnesses. My movies, my messages, because I preach them in my messages, in my movies, in my songs, in the church, in my crusades. So, and I have people, members in the church. So it should be the members that say, yes, she used to, she used to kill. Yeah, I don't know how you will kill. When I came to stop people from maltreating witches, I said, treat it as any other evil spirit. So bad tidings came to the king. They told lies. Always the devil is always looking for opportunity to, you know, catch, put more fire to it. Verse 31. And then the king arose and tear his garment. Trust, a sentimental king like David. And lay on the earth. And all his servants stood by with their clothes rent. Believing that bad story. That is what one, one small thing. Then that same Jonadab, the son of Shimei, David's brother, answered and said, Let not my Lord suppose that they have slain all the young men, the king's sons, for Amnon only is dead. For by the appointment of Absalom, this had been determined from the day that he forced his sister Tamar. How would they carry all the princes and go and kill? No, my Lord, it's not so. It is because this man raped Absalom's sister. And this girl is now the problem of Absalom. Because she went and stayed there, solitude, on her own. Depressed, on her own. No friends, no this, no that. Ah, she has broken her virginity. It was a big stigma on her. So, this was why Absalom became a bad person. That small thing, that satisfaction you are trying to 
you know, to get yourself satisfied in a bad way? Have you thought of the many, 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 many problems it will bring? Many, many problems. Many, many problems. Maybe Absalom could not have sought to take the position of the king. Because, because of this thing, the king is sending him on exile. He was cast out. But then if he's going on exile, he has to still go with the sister Tama. Because the sister cannot stay alone. So, this thing brought too many problems to King David. It will always cause so many problems in any home where it is done. Please. This is not God's punishment yet. These are humans reacting to the environment. Environmental crime. People reacting. And armed robber is coming. Every time. One day the people will come together and overpower him. What would they do? They kill him and burn him there in Nigeria. That is how they do. But this has brought problem. David has lost a prince. He has lost a virgin. He has lost the joy of a daughter. Then Tama on her own, she has lost everything in life. To her, life is cruel. Life is cruel. She had a good intention to go and cook for the brother. But it was a setup of the brother to lure her into sexual acts. I don't know whom the Holy Spirit is addressing, but I think it's you. Don't cover it. Because the guilt stays permanently. The torture, the torment. You need to go to heaven. So, strengthen all your crooked parts. Make restitution. Go to the altar. Go for counseling. Go to a pastor that has the word of God. Don't go to a pastor that is sleeping with women. Don't go to all these, uh, 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 you know, mega, uh, classic, classical, go to somebody that has the calling of God and has anointing. And don't also go to the pastor that defend other sexual acts. God has not called anybody to come and cover up sin. Sin is to be exposed. It is the unfruitful works of darkness. It should never be condoned. And the Bible says not only that you do it, but you take delight, you have pleasure in those who do them. You know that somebody, somebody is a rapist. You don't report to the police. Why? You know that somebody is sleeping with the daughter. I had a church uh, in one of our churches in Lagos. I noticed that a man was sleeping with the daughter and it was affecting the wife. And I told the wife that I'm going to report your husband to the... The man was not coming to the church, only the woman. So the woman said, no, 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 so that he won't sack me in marriage. So should this man be sleeping? He, she told me she, she, she lies on the bed and she hears the husband making love to the daughter. The daughter crying, daddy, please, daddy. And, and he will slap her, bam, bam. And she is still living there. Abomination. That is abomination. As you are listening, is this, this can be your problem. See the thing. It's demonic. He was obsessed with it, showing that it is demonic. Now, that is the essence of this message, to help you deal with the demonic thing that is pushing you to do all these abominable things because they don't want you to, they don't, they don't want you to have good relationship with God. They don't want your uh, prayers to be answered. They don't want you to have eternity with God. The devil is only coming to steal, to kill, and to destroy but Jesus has come to give us life in abundance only when you expose the unfruitful works of darkness. God is awesome. God is able to keep you out of temptation. He is able to deliver you. He is able to cleanse you. He is able to destroy that demonic link. He is able only if you are willing. If you confess, you prosper. If you hide, you lost. So it's up to you. If you confess, you gain. You prosper. You gain deliverance. You gain everything you ought to gain. Oh, praise the Lord. So that was what happened to the family of David. And that was when Absalom became wild, became a bad boy, 
became a bad boy because he was pained in the heart. That your daughter you are sleeping with. You have spoiled the life of that girl. There is a girl I knew. The father used to sleep with her. Then when we started Liberty Gospel Church, she came and confessed that the father sleeps with her every time. I said, do you know what of your sister? I said, she doesn't know. that. But I managed to ask, uh, call one of the sisters. The girl said, yes, the father has been sleeping with her. That's why she ran out of the house. Now, this girl is now, as I'm telling you now, she's now mentally deranged because she becomes depressed. She would have been married. They said she was married because she left Calabar to somewhere else. But she ran away from that man. She loves the father's sex more than the husband. So it became a demonic problem on the two sides. Is this what you are having? Some, some still hear the father's voice ringing. This is what causes barrenness. This is what causes zombie children. This is what causes provocation. Useless children, you deliver them because you are burning them. You are delivering them into the land. And the Bible says the, the, the earth. God said, I command the earth to spew you out. To spew you out. And the earth will not just do any other thing. We just do, we do just that. In Numbers chapter 35, verse 33. So he shall not pollute the land wherein you are. For blood, it defiled the land. Don't. Don't. Because this thing will defile the land, will corrupt the land. So instead of you being blessed by the land, the land will cause you. And the land cannot be cleansed of the blood that is shed therein by the blood of him that shed it. It has to be said bad. It has to be bad. For the cleansing, you ought to die. You ought to die. So is this, this person that is qualified to die, that is going to, that is, that is not saying, eh, 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 eh. no, when you become born again, you need to deal with this. The power of salvation is to help us deal with demonic matters. You can never deal with demonic matters as an unbeliever. And rape and all this defiling of women is part of the demonic things you need to counter in your life. I want to say that God is awesome. He's still giving us opportunity. And uh, don't tamper with God's glory. Don't create pains in the heart of a virgin. Don't even rape a woman, whether she's a virgin or not. Don't sleep with your neighbor's wife. All these things, the blood is defiling the land. And you say, but it's, it's running in my vein. Oh, glory. It's running in your vein. But the cast is that you are cursed. That's what Deuteronomy says. It says you are cursed. Deuteronomy chapter 27. So it brings causes. It piles up causes on your head. On your head. One day it will burst. Bam! And that is your end. And you put all your, you put your innocent wife, you put your children through some hardship, difficulties, and one of your sons will become possessed like you or your daughter and behave like you. Because you must always also bring according to your kind. So why, why can't we deal with this so that you get free? Like I said, to deal with this, because I would, I would like to keep it personal, please, you can send me letters, personal email, helenupai at yahoo.com. That's my email address. You can also like my page on Facebook. Not just like, like, comment, and share. Lady Apostle Helen Upabio. Subscribe to our YouTube channel, Liberty Gospel Church Worldwide. Follow us on Instagram, Liberty Gospel Church Worldwide. This will help you to receive updates and notifications on any new video. Thank you. We will still continue with this series. We will follow it until we get to the end. Once again, I appreciate you and I love you. And I pray that the God of heaven will keep you pure in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. <laughs>